Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. We got Brandon Drewy. Well, the, the Angels did, not, not us personally, but we're excited about that. So what does it mean? Where will he play? Does somebody get traded? And are there other moves along the way coming up? I can't wait to talk about this. You're at the right place for the right time. Good conversation happening. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked on Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And John and I thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. And if you do make it your first listen, leave a comment or send us a message because we would love to shout you out on the pod. And remember, every show is free and available on all platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And the best way to help us out is by giving a rate and a review. And those watching on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed and click that bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. Thank you for being here with us for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day and making us your first listen like the middle-aged gamer on YouTube. Hello, the (laughs) middle-aged gamer. Thanks for uh, making us your first listen. Mike, huge news that makes the hearts of these longtime Angel fans happy. You and me, Brandon Drury is a Los Angeles Angel. Yeah, it's some breaking news, my friend. How about that? Yeah, I I I like it. I'm a little annoyed. (laughs) <laughs> why are you annoyed um, i'm annoyed just as a brother because brandon drury <laughs> was the second player from your gm episode that the angels have signed so that's as a right. brother that's annoying you know when it's like the, when the baby of the family gets it right and i'm the baby and look at me you know and so i'm annoyed so i'm gonna come over and beat you up later but yes we got brandon drury john i am excited about that i think it was a a good move, and it was a move that should have happened a long time ago, right? Right, yeah, the Angels are riding a rung from last season when it went on record, and Drury talked about it, I think, with The Athletic and said he was expecting to play with the Angels last season. Then he got a call from the Reds, and they wanted him to come to spring training. So he turned around and went to Cincinnati, or or Florida, I guess. And so we were kind of hoping that we would get him last season when Anthony Rendon went down and make a trade for him. He was somebody that you and I spoke about a lot during the season yeah. and figuring how he could help the angels get through the trouble they were having, especially without Rendon at third base would have fit right in. Instead, the Padres picked him up and he went on to have a great NLCS actually. Yeah. I actually like him a lot and I didn't select him for my GM episode because we tried to be very, very different. Mm-hmm. But if if we were going to be similar, I would have gone after him because he feels mm-hmm. like an angel. He just yeah. feels like the type of guy that would slot right in and yeah. be really great for us. And so I, I love this move. And we'll talk about the depth piece and what it does for our team in a little bit. But first, let's just talk about the guy that we got, John. He's yes. a strong utility player. He can play at third base. He can play at second base. He can even play the outfield. Mm-hmm. And we signed him for two years, $17 million a year. That's $8.5 million a year, which is really close to what you actually talked about on your GM episode. I think you said $7 million said a year. $7 million. That was the yeah. spot track market yep. value. I'm starting to be a little suspicious of spot track. So I know yeah. that we've used them a few times. <laughs> Yeah. Starting to lean more toward fan graphs and their market value stuff, but that's yeah. neither here nor there because he's here. We got him for eight and a half million per year. You know what? I I overshot on Tyler Anderson. I said fourteen yep. million. He came in at thirteen. Drury got eight and a half. So let's just call it even. How about that? Uh, you know what your name is? <laughs> even Steven. Even Steven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so he's had two hundred and eleven career games at third base. So he's mm-hmm. predominantly a third baseman. Here's the good news. He also. He's played a lot of games at second base, 192. And John, he can be an outfield piece for depth when Mm -hmm. we need a day off for somebody. And so he could be in the lineup along with Gio Urshela in the lineup. And then we Mm -hmm. could actually have like a Renjifo or a Fletcher in the lineup and then give Mike Trout a day off or give Renfro a day off or give Taylor Ward a day off and then not lose uh, the, the bat to where we just are not we're not producing, right? And that was the struggle last season. So right. I love that he can play the infield, outfield, 127 games in the outfield in his career. He can play some ver- some first base, 48 games at first. And here's the thing that we'll have to really wrestle through, John. Only right. 11 career games at shortstop. And, right. and you and I both know that shortstop is 
what the angels desperately need if we're going to get a really great piece for on the field and also in the lineup. But we'll talk about that in just a moment. But let's let's look at his uh, deeper stats from 2022. Yeah, in 2022, he had a 2.6 war with baseball reference, B-war. He had 28 home runs, a 263 average, 87 runs, 87 RBIs, a 320 on base percentage, 492 slugging, and an 813 OPS. Baseball reference has him at an OPS plus of 122. That's 22% better than the league average player. Fangraphs has him at three war and a 123 weighted runs created plus. Uh, so that's a little bit better. They rate him a little bit higher than baseball reference, but OPS plus and WRC plus are kind of the same stat at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. So really he slots in about a, a three win player and 22% better than league average. Now he was better in Cincinnati than in San Diego, but with San Diego, he still had an OPS plus of 109. So that's yeah. still better than what we've had in, in our infield and who he uh, potentially replaces in the lineup going into the season for sure. Yeah. My only concern is that the end of the year can be indicative of how you start the next year. Mm -hmm. And because he was kind of on a downward trend and, and that makes it sound dramatic. He wasn't on a downward trend, but he was mm -hmm. trending lower than he would normally do in the first half. And, and so that that's concerning for me. I, I hope that it's not going to be who he is and perhaps being in the Southern California air and in, in Anaheim and being around this team, he can, get it together. Plus being with the team in spring training, he's going to be able to get to know the guys and get to know our guys and they're going to work with him. And I think that there's, there's only benefit in having, in having him around Johnny, this, this brings depth, depth, depth to our team. And that's exactly what PM, the GM wanted to do this off season. And so I think for the goals that he has set out, I think that he has really achieved those goals and achieved those goals. Well, Mike, I have a request. Okay. Okay. Somebody on Instagram commented and, and it was S S E L L C S S. So cell C S S I believe they said Johnny depth. <laughs> and <laughs> I think I want to be Johnny depth because Johnny this depth. is a depth move. I was the GM who signed him in our GM episodes. So just call me Johnny depth because now the angels have depth, depth, depth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, coming up on Lockdown Angels, what does this Drury signing mean for the infield? Where is Urshela going to play? What does this mean for Fletcher and Luis Renjifo? We're going to talk all about it coming up here on the show in just a minute. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to the college bowl season, which is getting ready to get started. It already actually started, and now it just gets better and better as the week goes on. And we're going to talk a lot about basketball and the World Cup and all that good stuff at Bet Online. so you can check it out. They, they've got great sports podcasts, and you can get information on how to bet and where to place a bet there. They're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. We want to thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen today. And for your second listen, go and check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, they've got it all. And they've got the insights and background info that you want as a sports fan. You can get it all in about 22 minutes a day, so it's not going to take up too much of your time. You can listen to it on your drive to work or when you get ready for work in the morning. Locked On Sports Today is available on this app. YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Well, the Halos signed Brandon Drury, and he adds another great depth piece to this team. And Johnny Depth called it out on his GM episode. We love that. Johnny, where is he going to fit in this lineup? When he was with the Reds, he batted second, which is interesting. We'll talk about that. And when he was with the Padres, they slotted him in fifth in the lineup. And so, there's some options there. If you're Phil Nevin, where are you slotting Brandon Drury in this lineup with Mike Trout and Shohei Otani and Anthony Rendon and Jared Walsh? Where's where's he fit best, John? Mike, I love that 320 on base percentage. 
Uh, that's about average. So about 32% of the time he's getting on base. And if you're, if you're a 30 percenter getting on base through a hit or a walk, that's pretty good. It's about league average, but that 492 slugging sticks out to me. Yeah. And so for me, I, while we have some great options at the top of the lineup, I think I'd rather see Drury slot somewhere in the middle of this, of this batting order rather than, I know that we've talked a lot about getting guys in front of Trout and Rendon and Otani so that they can drive them in. But I think that you just extend the danger of this lineup if you have Drury lower, maybe fifth, maybe mm. sixth, maybe seventh. I mean, good grief. That middle of the order is going to be Drury and Hunter Renfro and Jared Walsh, I think. And then yeah. you've got yeah. you know a catcher, and then you've got possibly David Fletcher in the ninth spot or whoever that might be. Maybe it's Luis Renjifo who could kind of be a second prototypical leadoff guy in that spot. Same goes for Fletcher at number nine. So Mike, I, I just really, if he's at the top, that seems fine. But if he's in the middle of this order, I think that really makes a big difference in extending the danger of this lineup and making them more intimidating than they've been in the past. But where do you see him slotting in? I don't think you mess with the top of the lineup, and I know we've had conversations about this, and I've mm-hmm. messed with the top of the lineup. But when you have a top of the lineup with Ward and and Trout and Otani and the numbers that they put up last season, I don't think you mess with that, and I don't think Phil Nevin messes with that. I think that Brandon Drury does slot into the meat of this order. You mm-hmm. have Rendon perhaps batting fourth, and then maybe you have a Walsh and then a Drury, or or you can flip those two guys. And I can't forget about Hunter Renfro. Yeah, and here's what's he's got great. power. And here's what's great. So you have that top three, which is fantastic. And then you have the next three pieces are really kind of interchangeable. Ren- mm-hmm. Rendon and Renfro and Walsh, or, or maybe Drury, Renfro and Walsh. And then you've got an, an extension of, like you said, you can have a Walsh perhaps hitting seventh in mm. this lineup, mm-hmm. John. And then a Logan O'Hoppy slots in there, Max Stassi right in that eighth spot. And then that ninth spot can go to whoever's playing short or second base ba- second base at that time. And I-, I just love how this lineup extends now. And it's not just going to be up to the top three. And we talked about getting a lot of people in front of Trout and Otani. But if the middle of this lineup is going to be as impactful as they can be, then I think that really gives an opportunity for the bottom of this lineup to get on base for the top of the lineup. Mm. And so I don't think we're going to have the same issue in 2023 that we had in 2022. And let's not forget that when we got Urshela, he was probably going to work as a as an option for Walsh when there's a left-handed batter or mm-hmm. a left-handed pitcher on the mound. Mm-hmm. Here's what's great about Drury, John. His numbers against lefties, 299 and 12 home runs last yeah. season. So yes. he might actually be the guy that is rotating with Walsh. And then Urshela might be rotating it second and short and third and maybe even a place in the outfield. So, man, depth, depth, depth. As we've said before, this is really interesting to have Drury on this team right now. I got this message from listener James Russell Barton on Instagram, and it was a tweet from Foolish Baseball. And he said, every angel in the lineup has a steamer projection over 100 weighted runs created plus. Wow. That means that everybody is at least average. Yeah. And that is a good place to start because there are many teams that have players under the 100 WRC plus that are still in the lineup. And and we've certainly had that in years past. I'm not a huge fan of projections per se, because I understand that they collect about five years of data and just kind of spit that out. And that's the result. I mean, they had trout at like 252 batting average next season. And that to me is just like, no, I don't think (laughs) it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And however, the fact that these guys all have a WRC plus, of a hundred or more in the lineup is fantastic. And bringing up Gio Urshela is another part of this equation, because if he's going to play, does that mean that Gio maybe gets shortstop now? I know that Mm. we didn't get one of the big four shortstops. Yeah. Carlos Correa could be back on the market again after the news on Tuesday (laughs) that the giants were feeling a little tepid about their medicals that they got back on him. But he, sure. uh, Drury's only got 11 career games at shortstop. Yeah. And so to me, I kind of wonder if they're just going to go with Gio 
yeah. at shortstop and give it a try because traditionally he's a third baseman and he's a decent third baseman. But the worst, the, the, uh, not the worst, the more difficult position is shortstop. But you yeah. traditionally see guys who can play short and play third base and and even some second base. Earlier, I would have said, no, I think Gio is going to play shortstop the least out of all of the infield positions that he can move around in. But now I kind of see him being there more if the Angels hmm. aren't going to make another move for a full time shortstop unless it's like David Fletcher. But I don't know, Mike, what do you think about all this? John, do you think that they're going to do what we talked about uh, a few episodes ago with what they could possibly do with the bullpen. And this was before they signed Estevez, but Mm -hmm. they, they would have kind of a a rotation of maybe two or three guys that would shut the the game down, her get and loop and to pair. Do you think that maybe all of these options is really Perry saying to Phil, we're going to go with a hot bat. Mm. We're going to go with the guy that is, is doing really well. And then when he's not, we're yanking him and we're putting somebody else in. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that is kind of the strategy here. And maybe Perry's moving away from here's the guy that's going to be at short all of the time. And I I think that that might actually be a really interesting and perhaps even successful way to go. And and here's why I also think it might be an ironic way to go because Joe Madden was the guy that kind of invented this when he was in Tampa Bay. Uh He was the guy that would move people around and have them play different positions, and they would go with the hot bat. It really kind of is a Sparky Anderson. There's a name for you. Mm. Uh, Sparky Anderson philosophy. He did this when he was with the Reds and when he was with the Tigers in the 90s. He would have players moving all over. Former Angel Tony Phillips. I don't know if you remember him or not, but he was Mm -hmm. key in our – really successful seasons in the mid nineties. We didn't really get very far, but he was the one that kept us in the race. Tony Phillips actually became Tony Phillips because of Sparky Anderson. And he played all over the field. He played infield and outfield. He was kind of like an Urshela and a Drury. And so I wonder if that might be the philosophy here. We're just going to go with a hot bat and we're going to deal with the defense and we're going to figure it out along the way because we've got Rendon at third. And then if, if, if he's, if he's healthy, He's going to be a vacuum over there. And we got Walshy at first with his, you know, his, his ballet slippers on, and he's going to be <laughs> doing all of his yoga moves over there. And so I wonder if that seems to be the philosophy. And in my mind, that kind of feels like a Perry Manassian move. You get the little fire icon on the show when a player is hot, hot, hot. And so maybe that's <laughs> yes. what they're looking for yeah. when it comes to these players and what they're able to do. Mike, it's just great to have options. I think about the years when we would have, you know, Sean Figgins and Meiser Asturias, like you just have right. these depth pieces. Right. And you you roll with, you, you can play the matchups now. Like you can have Brandon Drury come in against lefties. The Angels have enough depth to play a lefty righty matchup mm. kind of situation now, which is not always something we we had before. I know Louis yeah. Renhifo is kind of, is the switch hitter. And that's kind of the extent of what we would see when it came to platoons or, playing the matchups. And I know Joe Madden wasn't big on playing the matchups. And I think Perry wanted him to do it more. Yeah. This is kind of the answer for that. So you just confirmed that for me. I think that's exactly what's happening here. I think that that's why we didn't get a big major shortstop. I think that's why we went with Drury and Urshela. I think Perry and Phil are going to be on the same page and there isn't going to be phone calls during the game. I think all of the information that him and Alex Taman are going to give at the beginning of the game, that it's going to get disseminated and, and Nevin's going to communicate it well and, and it's going to be a matchup. So we're, we're going to show up to a game, and the only people that we can expect in the lineup every single day is Otani and Trout. Everybody else, it feels like it's kind of like we're going to throw the cards up, and we're going to see what happens, right? Unless you're me, who went to two games in 2021 where Otani was out of the lineup for <laughs> Phil Gosselin. Good yeah, grief. Yeah. Well, that's never happening again. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Well, today's show is brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Administration. This holiday season, as you're hanging out with friends and having a few drinks, sometimes a few drinks can become a few too many. So as the evening comes to an end, you may want to think about driving yourself home and that you're, you're, you're going to be okay to do that. You might be a little buzzed, but you feel good. The thing that I would encourage you to do is to not do that because... Truth is, everyone knows the risks about buzz driving and drunk driving, and the results are often deadly. 
often tragic. And, and sometimes that doesn't stop us from getting behind the wheel when we're under the influence. It's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on the road to save lives. So if you think that you're okay to drive after a few drinks, please think again. Play it safe. Plan ahead. Get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's life forever. Remember, drive sober or get pulled over. Mike, if the uh, the Padres can have three shortstops on their roster, then we can certainly have three third basemen on our roster. Absolutely. <laughs> but it does beg the question. We've got a lot of infielders, and I'm trying to find a great tweet. You know, there was a uh, there was a glitch in a video game. Oh, here it is. Uh, Parker Bob at Bring Us the Dingus on Twitter said, <laughs> "All your utility men are belong to us." And there is a running joke in the video game community of a bad trans badly translated game where it said, "All your base are belong to us." So he tweeted, "All your utility men are belong to us." And I said, "Well, as the Super <laughs> Halo Bros." We appreciate that. Reference. We are so, really appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> so all that being said, we have so many middle infielders. Yeah. And it's it kind of makes me, me wonder. And a lot of our listeners and viewers on Twitter were asking the same question. Is there a move on mm. the way? Does this mean that somebody is going to be traded? If so, who's it going to be? Who's on the bench? Who's going to be in triple A? Who's getting DFA'd to yeah. make room for Brandon Drury? on this team. So let's start with, do you think a move is on the way? I don't know if this is a decision to add depth and then we're just going to trade from that depth. And hmm. so I, I don't think that there is a, a trade that would be on the horizon with mm -hmm. Harry. I think signing Urshela and Drury is, as I mentioned, he's doing what he was planning on doing. This was mm -hmm. his goal was to add depth. And we, Quite honestly, if we lose Rendon, Drury slides in there perfectly. If we right. lose any of the middle infielders, Urshela slides in there. Or if we lose Drury or Urshela, then we have guys to take that place, that mm -hmm. role, which mm -hmm. we didn't have last season. And that's why we did see a Levon Soto. And that's why we did see a Phil Goslin. And so I don't think that there's a move on the way. What do you think, John? I, I agree with you in that I love having the depth, but... You know, John Morosi did tweet back on November 8th that Luis Renjifo, uh, he called him one of the most underrated players in MLB, is generating trade interest from multiple teams. Yeah. For now, the Angels plan to keep Renjifo and make a run at contending in the finals, in the final year of Otani's contract. And I wonder if that changes with this Drury mm. trade. I wonder mm. if you sell high on Luis Renjifo. I know we've got our trade episode that we had planned on doing today. And you discovered that, you know, the trade simulator didn't quite value Renhifo as high as perhaps right. we might as fans, or perhaps the looks he's getting from teams around the league. And maybe they see him as somebody they can sink their teeth into and help his bat out or help his defense out, whatever they think might be the key to unlocking his potential. I mean, he's young, he's mid twenties. He had a better year than he's ever had. He had 103 weighted runs created plus, and so that's the best of his career. I I would like to keep him. I know that if if anybody gets traded here, it's probably him. Yeah. A lot of people have interest in David Fletcher too, Mike. Uh, surprisingly, for as much as Angel fans dog on him for some reason, uh, the rest of the league seems to really like him. I love the way he beats up on the A's and the Mariners, so I would kind of want to see him stick around too, but... I, I think that at the very least, the Angels have options. If there were were a move that would make me go, oh yeah, you do that in a heartbeat. If you if you find a starting pitcher and Renhifo or Fletcher is one of those guys that gets you that pitcher and they have a couple more years of arbitration or something like that, I mean, I, I think you make that move. And if if that's what it comes down to, I would be okay with with that because you still have Soto and Velasquez behind them. And those are Soto, somebody that you want to see more of. Um, you've got Zach Neto waiting in the wings and perhaps he makes an impact at some point this year, more likely next year. Uh, and I, I, I think as far as those who get DFA'd, it might be Velasquez in this situation yeah. because they're yeah. certainly not going to want to get rid of Renjifo or Fletcher. 
um, and move them down to AAA. I think if anybody's going to get sent back down to AAA, it's going to be Velasquez. But of course, I, I'm not sure if he has moves left or yeah. Um, I know that he's on the 40 man, so there would be a, a DFA there and he could potentially get scooped up. So we'll see what happens there. But those are my thoughts. Um, what is, what does the bench look like for you going into this season now that Drury's on the team? Well, I think that what you're going to find at least on opening day is you're going to find Urshela and Drury starting. I don't mm-hmm. think that you sign these two guys and not start them. Hmm. I think that they're going to be in that lineup. Now I could see a, a scenario where like Fletch is in the lineup over Urshela, but ultimately I think that you're going to shor- see at shortstop. I would say it's short. Yeah. Okay. And, okay. and then Drury at second base. But I wouldn't be surprised if on opening day, that infield is Rendon at third and Urshela at short hmm. and Drury at second and Walsh at first. I okay. don't know if they're going to put all of the pressure on Urshela to start. I think that they're going to be really wise about the defensive side of the ball. Mm-hmm. And so, again, I wouldn't be surprised to see Fletch at short, maybe even Louis Renjifo. But I do think that we're going to see a rotation of players. I don't think it's going to be one guy and we're going to be able to count on him and he's going to play five of the seven days during the week. I think Mm -hmm. that we're going to see these guys rotating around and around and around. And quite honestly, John, that's probably the the best way to go because Rendon is not going to play 140 games. No. And Trout's not going to play 140 games. I think both of those guys are going to slot in at 125 to 135. And so that means that you're going to have to find ways to move some pieces around. So I think that you'll see Renfro move to center field or Ward move to center field when Trout is on the bench or taking a day off. And then you'll find other pieces slotting in. Where I think that the the bigger question lies is Joe Adele. Yeah. Because now you have two guys, right? Now you have two guys that can slot in that have great bats and they've played the outfield and they're, they're kind of your handy dandy utility guy. And so I think for Joe, he's got to figure out his defense. I think his offense will come. He's got to figure out that defense. So unfortunately, I think Joe actually starts in the minor leagues Mm. in triple a to start Mm -hmm. the season. And I think Moniac perhaps even yeah. starts in the minor leagues as well. And I also wouldn't be surprised if one of those guys gets traded. I don't want to say DFA'd, but I wouldn't be surprised if one of those guys or both of those guys are traded for a starting pitcher or for another bullpen piece. Yeah, I think you're I think you're right. And consider Ren Hifo has played some outfield. Fletcher yeah. has played some outfield. Yeah. Of course, you have Drury playing the outfield. Uh, you have a lot of prototypical or not prototypical, but like fill in outfield guys. But I think in some cases you can make Drury your fourth outfielder yeah, and also have him playing the infield almost every day. And you're right Right. about Rendon. He's not going to be in there every day. So you're definitely going to get the most out of Drury and Urshela on that side of the infield. My question about opening day is, if the A's run out a lefty starter on opening day, I could see Walsh not getting the start that day. Sure, I think that sure. that might be the the scenario there. But man, it just feels good to have options and to be able to ride that hot bat and have some depth for once. And again, I'm Johnny Depth because <laughs> I wanted this Drury signing and I've been wanting it since like the middle of the season when I wanted to trade for him and so I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. I know you're happy about that. We hope that you, the Locked on Angels listeners and viewers, are happy about it as well. Thanks for making Locked on Angels your first listen today. Now for your next listen, check out the Locked on Sports Today podcast. They're sharing some of the biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. They're available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. We appreciate you joining us. We ask that you would join us on social media at Locked on Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. We'd love to catch you there and chat with you about everything that's gone on since yesterday and the big news about Brandon Drury. Hey, Mike, what do we have on deck for Friday's show? We appreciate PM the GM adjusting our schedule and giving us right. great content to talk about. So we're moving our trade conversation to Friday. We've taken the trades that you've suggested, like trading for Anthony Volpe and trading for Pablo Lopez, and we've put them in the trade simulator to see what actually 
comes out? Like what, what gets cooked in there and is it actually good? And Mm -hmm. does it come out looking good for us? And I actually found some really interesting options in making some trades for a shortstop or making some trades for a pitcher. We're going to talk all about that. Would it benefit the halos or not? And we're going to play some GM games on Friday on Locked on Angels. Not reindeer games, GM Not games. reindeer games, Love it. GM Love games. It. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope you'll join us again for that episode. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Hey, Friday's the day after my birthday. How about that? I'm the 22nd. Wow, we'll be you. live on the 23rd. How about that? <laughs> All right, friends, that's going to do it for this episode of Locked on Angels, and we'll see you back here on Friday.